Today, we're discussing the debug mode and creative menu for Seven Days to Die. Now, we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. Recently, I've received a lot of requests, comments, and questions about the debug mode and creative menu in Seven Days to Die. So today, I'm going to give a brief tutorial on these features. I'll show you how to access both the debug mode and creative menu, and some very interesting things that you can do with these tools. First up, let's take a look at debug mode. Now, in order to access the debug mode, the first thing you're going to want to do is press F1 on your keyboard. That will bring up this console view or command prompt. Next, you simply want to type in DM and press enter. Now you'll notice here it says debug menu is on. So now we have access to the debug mode. Then all you have to do is hit escape and that will exit out of the console. Now debug mode offers a whole lot of very interesting tools for you to utilize. For instance, if we hit the escape key and we come to the pause menu, you'll notice something a little bit different. This, is, this pause menu looks very different than a standard pause menu because the debug tools section is active. You'll notice here we have day, time, and speed. We can change the time by moving this slider right here. You can change how fast time goes by by changing the speed. Below that, we have a whole bunch of options here that allow us to change things in the game. For instance, fly mode gives us the ability to fly, which is cool. God mode obviously gives us the god mode ability, meaning we cannot take any damage. No collision means we can go through objects and invisible makes us invisible to entities. So zombies and, and animals and that kind of thing. You can get right up close and personal with them in the world and they won't see you. Another interesting part of the pause menu is this section right here, the open POI teleporter. So if we go ahead and click on that, that brings up this little menu right here. Now this shows you every single POI that is currently spawned in your world. And there are a lot of them. For instance, my world has 10 pages of POIs. It also comes with a search feature. So if you're looking for one specific POI, for instance, let's say I wanna go home. So I'm gonna look for the Savin's World Testing Center. And all I have to do is click on this and boom, we automatically get teleported to that location. It can make finding POIs very, very easy in the debug menu. Now let's go through some of the keyboard shortcuts, some more of the awesome things that you can do with the debug menu. If you press the Q button, that will put you into God mode. It also activates fly mode and no collision. So now I can fly, Wee! So spacebar goes up, C goes down, and you can move like normal although you move a lot faster. Plus, we can fly through objects. There's no collision, meaning we will no longer get stopped by solid blocks. We can go straight through. And you can even go straight through the ground. Whee! Look at this. We are underground, taking a look at everything underground. This mode also makes you impervious to damage. Zombies, animals, nothing can hurt you. And entering this mode will also 100% heal you. Another question I frequently ask is, how do I get my zombie volunteers? How do I spawn zombies into the world? Well, with the debug mode on, all you have to do is press F6, and that will bring up the spawn menu. This will allow you to spawn entities into the world. The world. It comes with a whole bunch of different options. You can spawn one at a time or up to 25 at a time, which is really cool. You can also set it to have the zombies look at you. So if we bring in our good friend Arlene here, we can do a search for Arlene. And then here are the three variants of zombie Arlene. We have the regular, we have the feral, and we have the radiated. So then we can go ahead and select look at you. So when she spawns in, she's looking at us. And if we click on zombie Arlene, Boom, there she is spawned into the world. Now you'll notice Zombie Arlene is just standing there. Why is she not attacking? Well, that's because I have turned off Zombie AI or I have turned off Entity AI. So animals, zombies, anything spawned in the world that normally has an AI and moves, you can actually turn off their AI, making them basically just stand there and uh, wiggle. That is done by hitting the star key on your number pad. So if I hit that star key, her AI turns back on and she starts coming after me and punches me in the face. Ow, Arlene, stop it. Nope, stop. Bad Arlene, bad. 
And you noticed I hit the star key again and she went back into AI turned off mode, meaning she goes back to just standing there and wiggling. Now let's say that you want to completely halt the movement of the zombie AI. All you have to do in that instance is hit control star. So that same star key that turns on and off the AI, if you hit control and that star key, the zombie will actually completely freeze, which is really cool. You can get really awesome up close angles. You can take some really cool screenshots that way. So we can get nice up close and personal. Zombie Arlene will be completely frozen and no longer jiggle. That completely freezes all movement of the zombie. And then once again, if you hit control star, boom, she comes back to life. Although her AI is still off, if we wanted to turn that back on, hit the star key again, and she starts moving again. Another question I frequently get is, how do you detach the camera? And that is very simple to do. Once debug mode is activated, all you have to do is press P. That will detach the camera. So after you hit the P key to detach the camera, you can also hit F5. That will put you into third person mode. That way the camera stands still, but your character moves. So you see here, I am walking around, but the camera is not moving. Now let's say for instance, I want to just move the camera and not move my character. In that instance, you wanna hit the open bracket key, which is right next to the P key. So we hit that and that allows me to move the camera without moving my character. So as you can see, my camera is flying around my character like crazy. So it gives you the ability to move the camera to any place that you want. Now let's say, all right, I'm ready to go ahead and reattach my camera. All you have to do is hit P once again, and we are back to the attached camera view. And then once again, the F5 key will switch you back into first person view and you are good to go. You can go about your merry business. Now let's take a look at the creative menu. So similar to the debug mode, you do wanna press the F1, and this time you're going to type in CM, and then hit enter, and you'll notice right here it says creative menu on. Alternatively, you can also, when you load your game, you can also turn the creative menu on in the game settings, the game options. But if you're in the game and you wanna turn on the creative menu, just open up the console or command command prompt and type in CM, hit enter, and that will turn on the creative menu. So now when we open up our menus, if we come up here, you'll notice this little guy right here, the little light bulb on the crafting bar here. And as we hover above it, you'll see that it says creative. So let's go ahead and click on that. That opens up the creative menu here, and you'll see this right here, a whole bunch of blocks. 3,268 in total. But that's not all of them, folks. There are also several items and blocks that are called dev blocks or dev items. To access those, all you wanna do is click this little icon here. It says dev blocks on. So give that a click. You'll see that the color of the icon has changed and now we're up to 3,661 total. This menu here gives you access to every block in the game. So if you're looking for a specific building material or a decoration or anything like that, you will find it in the creative menu. Now, unfortunately, not everything that spawns into the world can be created or crafted by the player. However, you are able to find those blocks here in the creative menu. So let's say I'm looking to build myself a base and I need to some steel blocks to build it out of. I don't wanna spend all the time to upgrade from wood or, or cobblestone. I just wanna build directly out of steel blocks. Just type in steel into the search bar there. That'll bring up a whole bunch of steel blocks to choose from. Select a stack, boom, we are good to go. We now have 500 steel blocks in our inventory. Now in the creative menu, if you have the dev blocks on, you can also find a whole bunch of dev tools. Now, typically speaking, I only use a few of these tools. So the quickest way to find those for me is just to type in dev, D-E-V, that brings up the majority of the developer tools in this game. Alternatively, you can also search for admin in the search bar, and that will also bring up a majority of these tools as well. But let's go over these tools, especially the ones that I use the most often. The first one obviously is the Dev Instant Death Pistol. This pistol will instantly kill any entity in the game. It also fires extremely fast and has a crazy range. Next up, we have the Super Digger 
Trigger. This item will destroy any block in the game, as long as it is not a protected block, like traitor areas, that kind of thing, or bedrock. You can't go, you can only dig down so far before it'll no longer allow you to destroy anything. But it is very useful at clearing areas and destroying structures that you do not want. If something gets in your way, pull out the super digger and shoot it. It will be destroyed, no problem, instantly. I will caution you, however, this thing also has an extremely fast fire rate, so it is easy to accidentally destroy something that you do not want to. So be very careful when using the super digger. It's a lot easier and takes a lot less time to destroy a block than it does to create or replace a block, especially in survival mode. Next up, we have the dev paintbrush. The great thing about this paintbrush is it does not require paint, plus it has some added features that the regular paintbrush does not have, like the ability to paint all sides of a block. Now, these three tools are the ones that I use the most. However, I will go through a few of the others just to give a general overview of what they do. For instance, we have the super wrench. This will allow you to break down salvageable items with one swing. Now, the great thing about the super wrench is when you break something down that would normally explode, it does not explode. So for instance, if you were to shoot a car with say the super digger, the car would actually explode when you shoot it. But if you break it down with the super wrench, it does not explode. Explosions can cause damage to surrounding areas. So if you're looking to get rid of some cars without the splash damage of an explosion, bust out the super wrench, it'll save you a lot of hassles. Next we have the rocket boots. I don't use these things at all, but they are kind of fun. You slap these on and it allows you to jump very high distances and very far distances. I prefer just going into God mode and flying, but it is kind of cool slapping some rockets to your boots and, and jumping up really high or jumping really far. In my opinion, not particularly useful, just kind of cool. Next, we have the super looter shades. We've got the plus 100 shades and plus 200 shades. So these will increase your loot stage by 100 or 200, depending on which ones you go with. Then we have the pimp mining helmet that gives you 100 to cold and heat resist. It also has a built-in helmet light, which is nice. And we have the top Tough guy shirt that gives you plus 20,000 to health. The ring of fire is pretty cool. Once you have this equipped, anything you touch will turn, will set on fire. So anything that can set on fire, so entities, zombies, animals, that kind of thing. If you hit them, they will set on fire. Then we have the dev plot armor. This pretty much acts as a full set of steel armor in one piece. And we also have the dev full respec. Now this is actually very useful. This clears out all perk points as well as learned perk books. And then you have the dev note to testers. By opening this bad boy up, it will give you an assortment of dev items. And last, we have the electricity test note. This spawns in an assortment of electrical installations. Like I said, the majority of these items I do not use frequently, but they are all pretty cool. So now let me demonstrate some of my favorite creative tools in action. First up, we're going to demonstrate the instant death pistol. So in front of me, I've got 25 zombie Arlene spawned in and ready to go. And I'm gonna show you just how effective this instant kill weapon is. Let's see how long it takes me to take down 25 zombie Orleans with this bad boy. And boom, 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 just like that, they're all dead. Now one shot will kill them. If they're dead on the ground, you shoot them again, it will get rid of their corpse bodies as well. Next up, let me demonstrate the super digger. So I've come out here to one of these little rock structures in the desert, and let me show you how effective this is at destroying blocks. So if I just hold down the button, you'll see that we are just plowing through these blocks. This is a great way to remove structures in that, that are in your way, structures that you need to get rid of. It also allows you to quickly dig down to bedrock. So if we point straight down here, we can actually continually use the super digger all the way down to bedrock. So by using the super digger, we were able to get all the way down to bedrock in a matter of seconds. It took no time whatsoever. Again, I will reiterate, you have to be very, very careful with the super digger because it is very easy to accidentally destroy a block you didn't mean to. It fires very, very, very fast. Sometimes when you're trying to destroy a single block, you'll hold the button down just a little bit too long and it'll actually go off twice, destroying not only the block that you wanted to destroy, but also the block behind it. So again, be 
very, very careful with the Super Digger. Now let me demonstrate the Dev Paint Brush. So as you look at my inventory here, I don't have any paint in my inventory whatsoever. However, if I open up my paint list and uh, let's go ahead and we'll pick the bullseye. That'll be the thing that we're gonna paint. So I don't have any paint in my inventory. However, if I go ahead and paint, boom, the surface gets painted but I do not have to have paint in my inventory. Also, if you open up the radial menu, you'll notice a whole bunch of different paint options. For instance, you have the option to paint all sides. So if we select that, and then we go ahead and paint a block, you'll notice that it painted every single side of that block. This can save you a whole bunch of time at painting blocks. Another really awesome feature of the paintbrush is the copy block option. So if we go ahead and select the copy block option while we're hovered over a, a certain block that we're looking at, boom, you'll notice that it added in a certain block to our tool belt. Now if we go ahead and place one of those down and take a look, You'll notice it is a steel block that has been completely painted with that bullseye paint. Again, that can save you a lot of time, especially if you're building very intricate builds and you don't want to have to spend all of the time going back and painting everything. Instead, you can place down pre-painted blocks, which will save you a whole lot of time. Now, I have just barely touched the surface of what the debug mode and creative menu has to offer, folks. There are so many more tools items and things that you can do with these features. So what are some of your favorite features of the debug mode and the creative menu? Let me know in the comments below. Do you use the creative menu? Do you use the debug mode? I'd be very interested to hear what you folks have to say. Now if you'd like to see some more awesome 7 days to die tutorials, I've created a very special playlist that you can access by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining me in Savin's world and remember the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve